Hey everyone, Tactics here, bringing you guys a checklist of everything you should do in the first two weeks of Shadowlands. I'll also include a link to Medivh's Compendium, which is a great collection of information on what you should be doing in the first few weeks. Now I want to make this video short and sweet, so make sure you like and subscribe if you find it useful, and let's start with the leveling process. Of course, as with every expansion, the first thing you need to do is level up. As always, you're able to get these standard preparation items in things like goblin gliders, gun shoes, avalanche elixirs, and more to make your life a little easier. This time around, you do not have a choice where you start. Every player will start in Bastion and progress through the linear story to Maldraxxus, followed by Ardenweald and ending in Revendreth. Currently, if you're speed running your leveling, it should take you about 5 hours to hit 60, but for the average player, it'll take somewhere between 6 and 10 hours. One important reminder for those of you unaware, in Shadowlands you must complete the main storyline in each zone before you can advance at 60. This is likely because of the importance of Covenants and Blizzard wanting to make sure every player has tried out the various abilities before making their choice, but it's something to be aware of if you're planning to rush through leveling. Once you've actually hit 60, you can head to Oribos to align yourself with a Covenant. This is just a short intro quest line that takes you to your Covenant Sanctum and unlocks your Covenant abilities that you have to do before you can unlock anything else. From there, there will also be a short quest chain that will introduce you to your first Soulbind as well as the Daily Emissary Replacement in Covenant Callings, which is something you'll want to make sure you're completing every day. You have a little bit of freedom in what you do next after that. If you're still waiting for guildies or friends to catch up, you can either move on to unlock the Maw and Torghast, or if you've got a 5-man group together for dungeons, you can instead opt to do your Mythic World Tour. You will want to complete both of these activities anyways, so the order is up to you. To unlock the Maw, you'll receive a breadcrumb quest from your Covenant Hall sending you to Oribos, which will eventually lead to you meeting Venari, who will introduce you to the zone. You'll be able to come here daily to farm Stygia, which can be used to buy certain legendary powers, permanent Torghast enhancements, sockets for your gear, and more. I don't want to go into too much detail here, as I've already discussed it in my Systems Overview video, so if you want to learn more, you can check it out linked in the description below. After running around the Maw and completing its intro quest chain, you'll be able to move on and unlock Torghast. Now before running Torghast, I definitely recommend completing your Mythic Zero World Tour, as early on in the expansion, gear will be an issue for you when it comes to actually completing your Torghast runs, so you'll want to go in there with as much gear as possible to make your life easier. There are a couple less dungeons in Shadowlands than in BFA, with 2 in each zone giving 8 total instead of the 10 we had on BFA release. If you guys want to know more about the dungeon mechanics, I will be putting out small quick guides to every mythic dungeon on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Note that, like in previous expansions, you will not be able to enter mythic dungeons until after the first reset, so you don't need to rush to level and try and squeeze in an extra set of dungeons. Once you've completed your Mythic Zero runs, you can move on to Torghast to get your weekly Soul Ash. If you did your dungeons before doing the question to unlock them on Torghast, you'll have to do that now. It is extremely important that you complete the highest layer possible for both available wings of Torghast each week, as this is the only way to get the Soul Ash currency that is used to craft legendaries. This currency has no catch-up mechanic currently, so if you miss a week, there's no way to make up for the lost Soul Ash. Doing your Torghast runs will also take more time in the first week, as you'll have to work your way up from layer 1 all the way up to the highest layer 8. Once you've unlocked a layer, it will be unlocked in future weeks, so this will be much faster after you've progressed through it once, but at the beginning of the expansion this will take a little bit of extra time to do. Again, if you want more info on Torghast, you can check out my Shadowlands Systems Overview video. Now, you are able to enter Torghast in a group, which does make it a bit easier, especially early on, however it's not necessary and you should be able to clear it just fine solo. Also note that just like with the Mythic Dungeons, you won't be able to earn Soul Ash before the first reset, so there's no need to rush to try and get some before then. During the first week, you'll also want to do the available Covenant Campaign quests, which can be done at any point when you have some free time between doing the previous activities, as completing it will unlock your first two Soul Binds and grant you with Renown. Your Renown level affects a lot of things, from unlocking Soul Bound rows, to Covenant Transmog pieces, and even increasing the eye level of World Quest rewards. This is capped at level 3 to start, and increases by 3 each week. To gain renown, there are two weekly quests in collecting 1500 anima for your Covenant Hall, as well as rescuing souls from the Maw. Outside of this, you can also gain renown from completing a chapter in your Covenant campaign. 
unlike Soul Ash, this does have a catch-up mechanic implemented on release, as if you are behind the current Renown cap for any reason, you are also able to earn Renown through additional sources, such as the Daily Covenant Callings. From there, everything you need to do on a single character in a week is done, and for the remainder of the week you are free to do whatever you want, be it help guildies out, gear up more through random heroics, or level a new character and get them up to speed. When it comes to week 2, it will be a lot of the same. You want to do your Mythic Zero World Tour for gear, keep up to date with your daily callings and Stygia grind, complete layer 8 of both available Torghast wings, and of course cap your renown. In general, this is much easier to maintain than BFA, which is very nice to see. But that is it for everything you guys need to do in the first two weeks of Shadowlands. Hopefully this video helped you guys out a bit, and if it did, please feel free to like and subscribe for more Warcraft content. As mentioned in the video, I'll also be putting out quick guides to all the new Shadowlands dungeons, so keep an eye out for those. If you want to keep up to date with me, you can follow me on Twitter or check me out on Twitch, both at Tactics. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.